Hello grade 12s, in today's video we're going to be looking at very important things that you need to know relating to vertical projectile motion and answering vertical projectile motion questions. You need to know these things, you need to be able to apply these things, otherwise you will get all your calculations wrong, okay? And we need to draw graphs based off of these calculations as well. I give teacher tips throughout the entire video, so you don't want to miss any part of the video. Remember to subscribe for more physics and math videos. Let's go. These are things that I often see that students do not know, they do incorrectly, or they forget about, and then they mess up the entire vertical projectile motion question. So these are basically tips to help you ace your vertical projectile motion exam question, which will look something like this. Now, if you've missed my introduction video where I go over the definitions, important things that you need to understand before doing calculations, check out the link in the description box below. But these are the things that you absolutely need to know before we can even answer vertical projectile questions or draw graphs. So the first thing is obviously it's vertical projectile motion. So we're dealing with up-down motion along the y direction. And because of that, you can see that the equations all have delta y in them. Delta is basically the symbol for the little triangle. That's why I'm saying delta. But you can see that it's delta y, delta y, delta y. No delta x. So it's up-down motion. And basically, this means that the distance that the object moved. Okay, So it can be, for example, if we're working with an object that goes straight up and straight down, you could work out this height. You could work out if an object is thrown off of a building. You could maybe work out this as being delta y or this as being delta y. It depends on the question. The second thing that you need to know for vertical projectile motion. Now, obviously, I'm starting off with the more obvious things. I'm going to get to the more complicated, more juicy things that learners often get wrong. These are obvious still. But that vertical projectile motion involves projectiles. And that is when the only force acting on the object is gravitational force and everyone you should know the gravitational force is calculated by taking the mass of the object multiplied by gravitational acceleration g and on earth that's 9.8 meters per second squared downwards so actually terrible because i forgot the direction here downwards and again if you look at the equations that are behind me we can see the following all of them have, or not all of them, almost all of them have an A in it. So when you substitute in your value for A, you will substitute in 9.8 meters per second squared. Just be careful. Just be careful. And this is something that we will get into in one of the tips to come. But if you choose up as positive, remember, acceleration due to gravity is always down. So this will need to be substituted in with a minus. So if up is positive, acceleration is a negative. If down is positive, acceleration is a positive because acceleration is always down. So it is so important to understand and be familiar with and be aware of your direction. The third thing is that the velocity at your maximum height. So think about it you're throwing an object upwards or a ball is bouncing. You projecting an object at the maximum height, the velocity is zero. So in this case, I'm throwing a ball up, it's reaching, yep, that's its maximum height at that point, v is equal to zero. And then the velocity increases as it comes back down again. At this, in this scenario over here, I've got a building, I'm projecting an object up, upwards from the building. Say I'm projecting it with some sort of an initial velocity, let's pretend it's 10 meters per second upwards. As that object travels upwards, the object slows down so the velocity decreases eventually at its maximum height velocity is zero and then as it moves past its maximum height again the velocity increases but obviously in the opposite direction in this case if up is positive velocity will be increasing in the negative direction so it'll be like two meters per second downwards four meters per second downwards 10 meters per second downwards and so on but in the negative direction okay but important part maximum height Velocity is zero. Time symmetry is another important thing that will be very helpful in calculations. So what this basically says is the time that it takes in this, in this instance over here, the time that it takes an object from release to its maximum height. So the time that it takes to do that little journey. So you see here, it says time till the turning point. Let's pretend it took three seconds. It'll take 
three seconds once again to go from its maximum height back down to the same level where we threw it. That is called time symmetry. How do you apply time symmetry in a situation like this one? Well, if it takes two seconds to go from the building to the maximum height, it'll take exactly two seconds to go from the maximum height back to the point where it is in line with the building. I hope that makes sense. So from the top of the building to maximum height, it takes two seconds. From the maximum height back to the same level as top of the building. So you see it's all in the same horizontal level. It'll take two seconds. That's time symmetry. Very, very, very useful in questions when you're answering. Magnitude of velocity values. Another thing that is useful, if I release a ball at this point over here and I release it with 10 meters per second upwards, once it reaches that same level, okay, so the same horizontal level, but in the opposite direction, its velocity will also have a magnitude of 10 meters per second. Just please, please, please be aware that over here, the ball is going up. So it's 10 meters per second upwards. Over here, the ball has gone up, it's reached its maximum height, it's coming back down. So at this point, it'll be 10 meters per second downwards. And obviously, when we're doing calculations, one of these will be positive, the other will be negative, depending on the choice of direction. So if I choose up as positive, which a lot of people tend to do, then this one will be a positive. This one will be a negative when I substitute it in. Okay, keep that in mind. Same thing over here. Let's say I project a ball with a velocity of six meters per second. Remember, when it reaches its maximum height, it's going to have a velocity of zero. As it comes back down, once it's in line once more with where it was initially thrown, the magnitude will once more be six meters per second. But in this case, it'll be downwards. That is what I mean by magnitude of velocity values. Now this, this is where a lot of students go wrong and it's with choosing direction as a positive direction. This is essential. It's almost, it's, it's vital for this section. Now, in very rare scenarios, the question actually selects this for you. So you need to read carefully. The question might say, upwards was chosen as, po chosen as positive. Then you don't have a choice. Then they're telling you to take up as positive. Or they give you a graph, which might also force you to select either or of the directions as positive. However, if it is a question like the one that I showed you over here, they do not tell you which direction is chosen as a positive direction. You get to make that selection. And when you make that selection, I need you to indicate it at the top of your page for me. So for example, you'll say upwards is chosen as positive. Now, this is very important. What that means is that this influences all of your calculations. So if up is positive, okay, acceleration, acceleration due to gravity, we know it's 9.8 meters per second squared. Okay, we know that. But what direction is acceleration due to gravity? It's always down. So if you chose up as positive, acceleration due to gravity must be substituted in as a negative. It has to be. Then if you're working with a initial velocity, and say it's this picture here behind me, so let me just move myself up way quickly. Look at the picture over here. Let's say that we have an initial velocity of 10. So they say that they project the ball or they throw the ball upwards with a velocity of 10 meters per second. They're throwing the ball up. So VI is going to be positive 10 meters per second. Why positive? Because we chose up as positive. Okay, so knowing and choosing your positive direction is absolutely vital. Obviously, if you choose down as positive for this example, acceleration due to gravity is always down. So then this will be a positive, okay? Because you chose down as positive and acceleration due to gravity is always down. But initial velocity, you're throwing the ball upwards. So therefore that will then be a negative. So it can actually greatly influence what you do when you do your calculations. And another thing to note is that when you get an exam question like this and you choose a positive direction, you actually have to keep that the same throughout the entire question. So what I mean by that is you've got sub questions where you have to do calculations. Let's say you chose up as positive. You have to keep that the same for 3.2.1, 3.2.2, 4.2.1, 4.2.2, 4.2.3, 4.2.4, 4.2.5, 4.2.6, 4.2.7, 4.2.8, 4.2.9, 4.2.10, 4.2.11,
3.2.3 and when you draw the graph you can't change your direction that you choose as positive okay it'll completely mess up your sums um it also is very very confusing my next tip is we're going to choose the equation that we need to use remember here are my equations based on what you have versus what you need so you read the story you extract your information so you write down the variables so for example they gave you initial velocity we always know acceleration is 9.8 meters per second i'm sure that by reading this you can already tell me which way i chose as positive or negative because acceleration here is written as negative it means that i chose up as positive so this is actually the same question that i was doing earlier i chose up as positive my ball or my pen or my rock or whatever was thrown with an initial velocity of 10 meters per second upwards that's why it's positive acceleration is down always that's why it's negative it's reaching its um, maximum height where velocity final is zero velocity initial is 10 meters per second and basically what this question is asking and this is a very common question is how long did it take or what is the time that it took for the object to reach its maximum height so basically how long did that take how long did that journey take so you list your variables you list what you have you list what you know you list what you need and we're going to choose which equation to use based on this so if you take a look at all of your equations and i always say this to all of my students they each have one two three four variables all of them have four variables okay all of them you need to make sure that you know three out of the four variables which i do know in my case i know vi i know acceleration i know vf i'm looking for time so i hope it makes sense that we won't use this one obviously why can't i use that one because i'm looking for time so and this one doesn't have time so can't use that one i am looking for time so we can technically use this one this one or this one use one that is the easiest to use so i would not personally use well you can't actually use this one to be honest why can't i use these two this one or this one i can't use because i don't know the distance so in this case it's quite obvious that i need to use this one i have vf have vi i have acceleration i'm looking for time and a lot of my students say but ma'am i could use the second one and first find distance or displacement and then use another one to find time or i could use this one or whatever my best advice is just try and use one that gets you to your desired answer immediately it's not always possible but try in case you make a mistake along the way and this is an obvious tip it goes without saying i need you to always write your formula first then substitute then your answer with unit and direction so f s a blank formula first as it is on the formula sheet substitute in and of course you need to be careful because now some of our things are going to be positive and some of things are going to be negative and then answer it has to have units obviously and direction if you're working with a vector now my next tip is super important and that is that sometimes we're going to get situations where we have multiple stages of the motion if that makes sense and we need to use a new set of variables for each stage of the motion now the best way that i can explain this is with the situation like this we have someone throwing an object upwards off of a building it reaches a maximum height and it travels back down now one way that you could tackle this question is you could use two different stages of the motion so this would be stage one and then you could use stage two as being this okay this might be helpful for you the blue stage stage one will be from when the ball is thrown to when it reaches its maximum height if that's the case then your initial velocity will be the velocity that it's thrown by or thrown with let's pretend it's 10 again what would the velocity here be this would be your final velocity and it's at its maximum height so i hope you know that it would be zero acceleration is 9.8 um if up is positive then this would be negative 9.8 you see now we already have three variables Okay, that's stage one of the motion. Now, if we're looking at stage two of the motion, this becomes the initial velocity and this becomes the final velocity. It depends on how you break up your stages. But for the yellow stage, 
vi is now zero. Okay, remember, this was the final velocity of the blue stage, but it's the initial velocity of the yellow stage. I hope that makes sense. And the final velocity is the velocity that the ball hits the ground with. But acceleration is still negative 9.8 meters per second. Remember, it's only negative because I chose up as positive. Just be aware that breaking things up into stages may be helpful. Here are some other tips to help you with vertical projectile motion questions. Sometimes I don't give you a sketch or diagram. And if that's the case, it's sometimes helpful to actually draw one for yourself. I've mentioned this already, but read to see if they've already chosen a positive direction for you. If they have, you don't have a choice. You have to use it. If they have not, you get to choose a positive direction, but you have to stick with it throughout all of your questions. I hope that these tips have been helpful for you. Please check out the playlist link below for more videos and where we actually go over examples and graphs. I hope to see you in another video very soon. Bye, everyone.